Research team Eric Verspoor is the director of the Rivers and Locks Institute. He joins me now from Loch Ness in Scotland. Eric, good to have you here on the News Hour. Now, I'm wondering if we could start off with what led uh, your team to start this research. Is it the fact that um, uh, the mapping of diver biodiversity in the world's lakes is pretty much the lowest among all ecosystems around the world, or is, were you trying to get out there and maybe prove or disprove this, this myth of Nessie? Well, for a start, um, our team actually joined Professor Neil Gemmel from the University of Otago in Dunedin in New Zealand. And he's the one who started this international project. Um, and he invited us to join him as we're a local group who have very similar interests in using eDNA in order to uh, understand the biodiversity that is in the world's lakes. Um, eDNA is, is a, a technology that was developed in the early 2000s and now with advances in, in general technology, um, we can use it to really start to understand the full range of the biological communities that are in lochs. And as you say, um, lochs are one of the most poorly understood ecosystems in the world. And yet, from even from what we know, they're the most diverse of our world ecosystems. Tell us uh, more of how this research was conducted, how you connected the DNA, and how this will be uh, better help you understand uh, the locks. Well, actually collecting eDNA is a fairly straightforward process. You have to make sure that you just collect a liter or so of water and that it isn't contaminated by uh, any uh, water or soil or anything from somewhere else and you then filter the DNA out as, as you're showing there. And it, um, you then take that filter, extract the DNA, and you sequence it at using next generation sequencing techniques, which are able to generate uh, millions and even billions of um, DNA sequences for all the DNA that you have uh, extracted and then from that you can tell which types of species are present. So uh, the, the, I think the million dollar question is is the monster there or not and if it's not a monster what's there? Well I think we have two questions what is the monster and clearly we know that the monster for some people was a hoax. Uh, we have other examples where there may be um, biological explanations for it, such as the possibility that it's an eel or it's a large fish, such as a sturgeon. Um, however, the images really suggest that there may be a variety of explanations. So what we have is a myth, which is really a collection of observations, which may or may not represent a single entity or not. What we do know from the eDNA analysis is that we can rule out that it is something like a plesiosaur. Mm -hmm. There was no reptile DNA actually extracted from the loch at all. Um, so we're quite confident about that. And so a few of the other suggestions can also be ruled out like a large catfish or a sturgeon. They weren't found. But um, that said, yeah. uh, there is a lot of DNA that we don't know where it's from. Okay. So there are a lot of unique species okay. in there. All right, thank you very much. Uh, perhaps a giant eel or sturgeon. I think uh, monster believers will be somewhat disappointed. Thank you very much for joining us.